Hello you do, welcome back to another game of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. This is actually going to be the final, the very very final of the Nation Wars number 3 of the years 2015-16. And this is going to be France versus Korea. So I'm absolutely totally excited to cast this game for you guys. It is the final, we've been waiting for this one for a long time. And after this one we're going to be beginning the dream hack which uh, was held at the end of January. It's just a few days, there's a bunch of games involved there. Let's introduce our players very quickly. Actually, first thing is first, the question of the series in this one is going to be very simple. Which nation are you from? Leave it in the comments below, of course, just to show a bit of love to your own nation. Whether you, whether they have already been knocked out, whether they're in this, which would be absolutely awesome for you, I suppose. But yeah. So first first player is Milmord, also better known as Marine Lord, spawning as the Blue Terran up at the top hand side of Dust Towers. He is representing both Team Millennium and of course France. His opponent, Root Hydra, who is also starting off with a hatchery first, is spawning as the Red Zerg and he's representing both Root Gaming and Korea. So pretty standard opening from both of our players. Marine Lord, of course, pretty much every game, no matter what, unless he's cheesing, starts off with the barracks and, rea and uh, refinery beginning, which basically gives him an early Reaper. He does this every single game, no exception, of course, unless he is cheesing. And it looks like he's going straight for his expansion straight after that. So the spawning pool is very soon to be complete here for Hydra. The Reaper is not quite out yet, but it will very shortly be out. And I just noticed the pattern at which Hydra went with that Overlord. He's actually gone around here just to spot if there was any sort of cheese going on. I mean, the funny thing is you could just place the barracks here or even here and it wouldn't be spotted by that. But uh, I don't know. Seems that that is the most common place to build it. I mean, I've seen it up here and I've seen it very commonly over here as well recently. So it's a bit strange how those two spots are very commonly selected for cheese. Looks like there is just four Zerglings out on the field. These are just kind of, you know, don't get too close to us because we're going to wreck you. Zerglings. Looks like one gets picked off and the other guy is probably going to want to back off. Two of them already getting picked off here. Now this Reaper doing so well, taking out four Zerglings already. That's the first four Zerglings from Hydra, so already paying off for itself. Despite the fact that, you know, he hasn't actually killed any drones, I think that the fact that he starts off like this anyway is actually making this Reaper alone worth it. Now this is going to be standardized very quickly as well. He is going for the, the Medivac drop with one Widowbine and six Marines. The timing for that is going just about perfect. Now just a bit of timing to note. A very, very perfect timing for the uh, medevac to be showing up at your opponent's base is about four to four and a half minutes. At that point is when you can expect these drops to go down. We're going to see how long this one takes for him. It is probably going to be about four minutes 15 if he loads it up and goes straight into the base. So 4.15 to 4.30 is quite a standard time. It looks like we have an early layer coming out as well. Roachborn is about to complete also, so that is a very good choice for him, I have to say. And I wonder if he's... Is Hydra going to go for some sort of timing push here? Because realistically... Yeah, look at all those roaches that he's creating right now. Four roaches in the making. He's still droning pretty hard. I mean, look at... he's He is indeed getting drones continuously while also getting roaches. There is that drop. 408 is when it was leaving the base, getting spotted by an overlord already. And it's going to be about 4 minutes 30 that is going to make it into the base. Now the flight distance is a little bit longer in this map, despite the fact that it's it's a two player map. But 4 minutes 30 is exactly when he's showing up. Look at that. 4 minutes 30 on the dot. Oh, he's going to have to lift these units off and move on away from here. He definitely does not want to get caught by all those. Looks like there is a Liberator coming out here for Marine Lord. And he's actually building up a second expansion. Now this is peculiar, look at that. So there's actually a Spire coming down here as well. Four gases have been put down. So I believe, if I remember right, four gases will 
leave you with about 700 to 800 gas when D Spire pops. So let's see what he's going to end up with. The drop going down here, it's unfortunately not going to be able to do a whole lot since the Roaches are already here and waiting. So as you can see, Hydra has spread his forces thin just to basically defend up against this and it's definitely the best option for him. The Spire is about to complete. Now he has spent some of that gas on an upgrade here, so unfortunately not going to have as much. Probably going to end up with about 600 when that Spire completes. Oh, Widowmine has borrowed. Didn't quite manage to shoot off. Two drones have been taken out so far. And there we go. A few more units taken out. The Liberator here also doing a bit of damage. Spire has just completed with 670 gas. And now the Mutalists are on the way. So these Marines starting to do a bit of damage here. Almost sniping off that Queen. That would actually be quite, quite important if he did manage to snipe that off. But unfortunately not quite. It looks like the Marines are starting to attack here. Now the question is, has he seen that Spire? Honestly, I would not be surprised. No, he did not. So he is not aware of this happening at all. And there we go. Now, of course, he's going to be aware of the Mutalists. He's going to try to snipe. Okay, so I thought he was going to go for the... the the actual medevac but looks like he decides to go for the liberators now not even losing a single mule is there he's lost six total drones how many has he lost throughout the game eight already which is not bad marine lord doing his harassment style he loves to do the harassment that of course is very important looks like more liberators being created as well he's actually forcing out or producing two at a time and the stim pack is also going down for the marines. Now 1-1 one, one carapace and ranged attacks for ground units is on the way for Hydra as well. So definitely taking up. A bunch of roaches also being created. And he's building up his ground forces right now. Now army supply is just barely... Just barely... Uh, favoring marine lord but that's probably because of the few siege tanks that he's got in his base worker supply is very very even just about the perfect round uh, account amount which is between 60 and 70 depends really on the player some people like to go up to 70 some people don't and let's see how this one plays out and just to point out about worker supply if you count in how many workers you've got at 16 plus 3 plus 3 which is 22 which means the perfect supply amount for workers on resources is 66 excluding any ones that you're using to build or uh, scout or whatever it's 66 now usually players like to come or a little bit overcompensate like for example hydro right now that is probably because he's building a bunch of buildings as well. So you can see the infestation pit is on the way. He does have level 1 ranged weapons. Or not ranged. Flying units on the way as well. Now the question is going to be. Whether he is planning on making corruptor slash broodlords with that. Or if he is planning on. Just using mutilus. I honestly think it's going to be broodlords. Because. There's a bunch of marines and siege tanks here. And a huge engage going on here. I think that the, the, the still marines are going to absolutely slaughter. All of these Zerg units, there's nothing that they can do in terms of fighting such a huge marine marauder army. The stim power just gives them an absolute massive boost. Two defender circles have gone down now. Oh my god, so much damage going to be going down here. And two of those getting sniped out. Very nice play here from Hydra. Now the stim marines running straight into that base. They're dodging all of those corrosive piles, which of course is perfect. And at this point, it looks like Marine Lord is going to be aware of that expansion. Of course, the reinforcements was coming from there. So, main army engaging onto here. Actually, it does look like Hydra has enough units to deal with this at the moment. Siege tank in the back. Oh, but the split of the units is going to mean that he's not going to be able to deal with this fully. Now, these units are going to be enough to clean these up. Siege tank probably going to need to be lifted off here. Siege tank, and there we go. Now the reinforcements from Marine Lord definitely going to be able to clean up these units. There's not a whole lot of Zerg units on the field right now. Army supply slightly favoring our Terran. 
and more ravages being morphed in as well so he's basically getting rid of all of his roaches almost and just making bunch and bunch of ravagers big wall here as well just a note now level 2 weapons and armor is going down for the bio army of marine lord as well so in just a few moments he's going to get a big power boost as well dodging oh some girls of is actually hitting there that was quite nice here from hydra a bit of a mistake from marine lord and a full on surround here a lot of girls of bile is hitting down and it looks like there is actually a counter attack here from the zerglings just to note actually running into both main and boat expansions a lot of SCVs being wiped out there but this this engage is what matters here right now siege tanks getting picked off corrosive vials hitting almost all of those siege tanks just one escaping with its life of course thanks to the medevac now there's a lot of damage done here there's 10 scvs in total not a huge amount but of course any sort of counter attack that you can do especially considering it was only a loss of a few zerglings is very good and he's also managed to hold off the base here quite well and at this point what is this this is an ultras cavern of course, against a bunch of marines, this is exactly what you want to have. Ultralisks is the best answer. The question I have right now is, are those ultralisks going to be there on time? Because the ultralisk cavern is not complete, which means the ultralisks themselves are not even in production yet. But this army is just engaging straight on. There's a lot of medevacs, there's a lot of marines. I think that the marines are a little bit more powerful here. There's so many of them. Siege tanks in the back also doing a good surround or good damage from the support in the back and it does look like it's turning out almost even here but the siege tanks in the back of course gonna do a bit of damage as well now there is again a counter attack with zerglings inside the bases of marine lord very good response here from hydra i have to say just making use of the fact that all of marine lord's army is right here in the front but hydra right now he's so far down on actual uh unit count and these siege tanks getting picked off with a few zerglings very well played managing to respond to that just on time and there we go ultras now on the way there's five ultras on the map of course level three carapace and chitin splating is also on the way he needs to get those up before engaging onto this army if he gets that done he will be absolutely in a position to tear through this army nothing that these marines and marauders will be able to do will be able to counter off a bunch of ultralists fully upgraded now they're already moving in but unfortunately it's not good upgrades not enough he's missing three armor which means that they are getting hit quite hard despite the fact that they are ultralists indeed oh i think that this was a little bit too early i think it would have been better to sacrifice this expansion and just let the marines die later on oh and gg has been called so hydra I think the one biggest mistake that was made here is basically engaging with all those ultralists before his level 3 carapace and uh, chitinous plating was done. I think that was the one, very one nail in the coffin. And that's it for the first game. I hope you have enjoyed it. Of course, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, Korea versus France. France takes the first game with Marine Lord taking that point. Now, of course, our question of the series still remains the same. Which nation are you from? Just show a bit of support down in the comment section below. Uh, if I had to choose my own nation, I wouldn't even know. I live in Ireland and uh, I'm technically Latvian and I also speak Russian. Who do I vote for? Who the hell knows? Uh, my favorite teams would probably have to be Poland slash uh, Ukraine. They have some of my favorite players in them. So I suppose that's who I would be supporting. But obviously not really from there. So that's pretty much it. Hope you've enjoyed this guys. Good luck. Take care. I'll see you guys in game number two. See you guys next time.